Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about fetal musculoskeletal ultrasound. Most musculoskeletal abnormalities are seen in late second trimester and the third trimester. We will start by looking at fetal hand anomalies. On the left side, we can see a normal hand. The thumb and four fingers can be seen normally. This is a case of polydactyly. In this condition, there are more than five digits in a hand or foot. Clinodactyly is a condition in which there is abnormal angulation of interphalangeal joint. It usually affects the fifth finger. There is hypoplasia of middle phalanx. That is this bone of the fifth finger. It does not develop properly which causes inward angulation. In ectrodactyly, the central fingers are absent. We only find a thumb and two other digits here. There is a separation of thumb from these fingers which creates a gap in the middle. This is also called lobster claw hand. Here is an image of a normal fetal foot and over here is a foot affected by ectrodactyly. The central toes are missing. Only the big toe and the fifth toe are seen. A clenched hand will often look like this. If the hand remains clenched and fixed throughout the pregnancy, it may be associated with trisomy 18, which is also called Edwards syndrome. Club foot refers to a condition in which there is abnormal angulation of the foot at the ankle relative to the tibia and fibula. Normally, the ankle and foot must look like this. This is the proper alignment of the foot, whereas over here it appears curved at the ankle region. The foot often remains fixed in this position throughout the pregnancy. Here is another image of a club foot. The abnormal angulation is more severe in this case. Rocker bottom foot, which is also called congenital vertical talus, is a congenital anomaly in which there is a convex plantar surface of the foot. It is associated with trisomy 18, that is Edwards syndrome. A sandal gap toe consists of a prominent gap between the big toe and the second toe. You can see the difference in the size of the gap as compared to the gap in the normal foot. Usually it is an isolated finding but sometimes it is associated with Down syndrome. A short femoral length is associated with many types of anomalies such as growth restriction and skeletal dysplasias. The femoral length will be shorter than expected for gestational age. Micromelia is a term that refers to shortening of long bones which are present in the limbs. In the normal image, we can see a normal, well developed humerus. Whereas in this image, we see a small humerus as well as small radius and ulna. On the left side is an image 
of a normal thorax in sagittal plane and on the right side is a small thorax a small chest will look like this the abdomen is protruding out as well this appearance is associated with lethal skeletal dysplasias osteogenesis imperfecta is a congenital disorder which affects bones and connective tissue and has many features on ultrasound the calvarium has decreased ossification it is not hard enough and becomes softer than usual the normal calvarium has some posterior shadowing and we cannot see the brain anatomy in the near field of the image but in this case the skull bone is soft which allows us to see more brain detail and there is no shadowing also the skull can become deformed with pro pressure this disorder also causes fractures in long bones we may find a fractured femur which will look like this in this image we see a fractured humerus you can see a disruption in the bone right here thanatophoric dysplasia is the most common lethal skeletal dysplasia fractures along with short and thick long bones are found this is a short thick femur with a fracture this is an image of the tibia it is shorter in length and thicker than usual it is difficult to evaluate the tibia as compared to the femur thanatophoric dysplasia also consists of a clover leaf configuration of the skull this is how the skull shape will look like it is called the clover leaf shape on the left side we can see normal soft tissue thickness in the legs but in the image on the right there is increased soft tissue thickness in the extremities if we find all or most of these features we can diagnose thanatophoric dysplasia achondrogenesis is a rare skeletal dysplasia it has a variety of features the most common one is absent spine this is a normal image of the fetal spine in sagittal view we can see a well developed hyperechoic spine but in this image we do not see any hyperechoic spine the vertebral bodies are absent this is due to vertebral body demineralization nuchal edema is another feature of achondrogenesis normal nuchal thickness looks like this in transverse view it is measured when we see the cerebellum in this image we see an increased nuchal thickness this is due to nuchal edema it is very prominent the skull bone is developed normally but since the spine is absent this appearance collectively is called the floating head appearance rib shortening is another feature of achondrogenesis the normal ribs are seen here they are also producing some shadowing on the sides but in this image we see short ribs and no shadowing on both sides this image shows us the normal chest and abdomen 
The next feature is a protuberant abdomen. It is bulging out. It usually occurs along with a small thorax. Achondroplasia is another common skeletal dysplasia. A trident hand is one of its features. You will find a prominent gap between the third and fourth digits. A short femur is also a feature of achondroplasia. The femoral length is shorter than expected for gestational age. An abnormally protruding forehead is also associated with achondroplasia. It is called frontal bossing. The forehead has an abnormally increased convex curvature, which is not seen in normal cases. In a depressed nasal bridge, the top part of the nose sinks deeper. It can also affect the forehead if it occurs. The forehead may also be depressed. Arthrogryposis involves fixed joint contractures with absent fetal movement. We will not find movement of the limbs. You will see fixed joints and stiff arms and legs, which will not change their position throughout the pregnancy. This is an image of the arm. It has remained in a fixed position throughout the pregnancy. Amniotic sheets are thick bands of amnion that are connected to the uterine wall. They do not cause any deformities in the fetus because they do not trap any fetal part. On color Doppler, internal flow can be detected. Amniotic band syndrome occurs when the amnion is disrupted from the chorion and is able to float around freely. This free floating amnion may trap any fetal parts. This can cause deformities in the trapped part and can even lead to fetal demise. Usually it affects the fetal limbs. It can even cause Amputation of toes and fingers. If fetal head is trapped, it can cause anencephaly and fetal death. If the abdomen is trapped, it can cause hernia and abdominal wall defects. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.